Hey there team, this is another gameplay review, this time for Killer, we've got Wraith on Midwich Elementary School, the new Silent Hill map. As always, if you want your gameplay to be in one of these videos, send me an email or hit me up on Discord, the links will be in the description or on the screen. Let's get into this. Alright, so you're Wraith on Midwich, which seems to be a pretty good map for him, however, this is a rank 20 game, so keep that in mind first things i want to go over is the perks we've got no one escapes death hex perk sloppy butcher rank three we've got whispers rank one we've got bloodhound rank two all right so sloppy butcher is great that's a fantastic perk for just about any killer that hits people with a mouse one you've got bloodhound which is a nice tracking perk but i'd say it's a bit of a crutch perk especially in the beginning um you'll grow used to seeing glowing pools of red um, on hurt survivors and once you take this off for better perks you'll suddenly become really attached to it and you you know you run out of pools of glowing red pools to see so i i don't really like this perk at the beginning of the game for that reason um you've got rank one whispers which is just not good uh it the way this works is it's a t it's a radius around you which i believe it is 48 meters for rank one which is huge especially in a, a map with two floors and so it's going to be encompassing both the bottom and the top floor no matter which floor you're on so i'd say that rank one is absolutely not worth using um, so I'd replace this with just about anything else. Now, No One Escapes Death is perfectly fine if you have nothing else to use, which it looks like you don't, so No It is fine. I don't like the perk, because like I said with this one, it's a crutch perk. Uh, it'll pull games away that you shouldn't pull away. Um, I'll come up with some other suggestions at the end of the video, so let's get into it. Alright, so you spawn in. Uh, the map's pretty new, so nobody really knows the spawns quite yet. I assume they just spawn across from you. Um, what you want to do at the beginning of the game, in general, is you want to f locate the furthest gen from you, and you want to essentially, like, say if you're going to go this one, you want to collect, you know, connect the dots between them, checking each generator on the way, right? This way, you'll basically go around the whole map checking each gen for progress and you'll find survivors easier that way now this move is pretty not good uh, you spawn directly next to the basement and you've got whispers you're not they're not gonna be down there they don't spawn in the basement there's no reason for you to go down there so you should just head over to this gen and see if there's anybody there which it turns out there is you hear him working on it you see him he sees you and he heads to this window that's almost always going to happen. Uh, being new, you're never going to be able to predict this. However, there is something that you can do about it. If somebody goes through the window like this, you just cancel your decloak. Just stop holding M2 and go around it or through it. Which you eventually go through it, but you're uncloaked and much slower this time. He just went through this, this window and he's just going to be able to get away. Uh, you do a pretty good job tracking him. Uh, you end up losing his trail, but you find somebody else pretty quickly. And you, you're trying to look for their scratch marks and you can't find them until right here. Right about... Oops. Right about there. You're looking over here. There's scratch marks to your right. Unfortunately, if you're not experienced at checking your whole screen or keeping your eyes out for the scratch marks as somebody at rank 20 would be, you can't find these, which it's kind of unfortunate. You're looking at these scratch marks in this blood. That's that's totally fine. However, there is one thing to keep in mind. Uh, if the scratch marks are faded, they're either using lightweight or they're old scratch marks, which means they started walking. Uh, which means that they're probably close by, which is the case right here. They they ran. That might actually be them right there. Um, they probably started walking and then started running again to leave over through there. You think they go into the lockers, which is a pretty natural reaction at the beginning of the game. Um, good, you go into cloak here. That's fine. 
no, they're not going to be back there. It's probably a better plan to just move on and check the next gen. Uh, you're peeking around here. This is some maneuvering that I'll go over at the end of the video um, about how you appear to be rather skittish. Uh, you, you, you hear something, you see a sound notification, and you're looking around. You don't really see anything until you get right here. Now, I think you get stuck on something. You see these scratch marks, and they're leading around there. You hear a crow, but about right there, you hear somebody working on a gen on the other side of this wall. Now, this is the point where you want to uncloak, because they can't see you through this hole. They can only hear you nearby. They know you're there, but they don't know you're there until you are there. But what you do is you confirm the existence of the of the Dwight, and then you start unhooking. Now you or uncloaking. And you get the hit, which is fine. So I mean, the point is moot. But the the chance that you get a, a grab is it exists, so it's not to be discounted. In the future, people are going to be able to see your people are going to be able to see Wraith while he's cloaked. So you're 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 going to want to be a little bit more stealthy as you move up the ranks. Now, this Dwight goes in through this window, and he goes at an angle that he's almost always going to get a slow vault. So you see him go into this room right here in just a second. I might have gone back a little bit too far. That's all right. We'll see him walk through this window at such an angle where he's always going to get a slow vault. And you can swing a little bit early on these slow vaults like around here you can swing because you see him start the animation and he's gonna just bolt in through and then you start swinging and you'll almost always get the hit um but of course the point is moot because you end up getting the hit and everything is fine you can just pick him up throw him on a hook get the pressure and all is well now you definitely need to be right over top of him to pick him up that's just some things you're gonna have to learn by playing the game <laughs> um yeah, so throw him up on the hook. And now, right when you hook someone, since this is your first hook, always cloak. See how long it takes you to realize that you need to cloak? Quite a while, you see a sound notification, you're looking around for a way to get down, you can't quite find it until you find one over here. You're still uncloaked, unfortunately. This is your main power as Wraith. You, you need to be cloaked. Um, unfortunately, right here, you don't see this little opening. This is pretty easy to miss. Right here, there is a vault, so just keep your eyes peeled for such things like vaults right there. Another gen pops, that one that made a sound notification, and another one that somebody probably vaulted a window or something, something like that. Yeah, it looks like they vaulted a window, so they're probably in that room. Oh, you catch some scratch marks. Try to take some creative routing, which is smart. Since you are Wraith, you don't want to get spotted. You're doing a little bit of gen patrolling. But see, now we're in the part of the video where you you don't really know where to go. You don't have any survivors to chase. You're, you're just wandering around because you're lost. Um, this is going to be a thing I go over at the very end as well. It's a big problem that I see a lot of newer killers, um, even down into rank like 8 or 9, where they just have no, they don't know where to go. You think somebody's here because you hear the gen being worked on, uh, which, I mean, is, is pretty logical, but this is the one that you, you checked on earlier. You hear some bones crack. That cracking noise was actually, uh... A totem, a dull totem that got broken, but unfortunately there's nothing in this room, so it has to be directly below you, which is a, a bit of a confusion game for you. You peek through that window, you don't see anything right here. You see this Meg? If you were cloaked, she probably wouldn't have gotten off of this gen. As you are walking down this hallway, after you peek, you walk down this hallway, she can already eat, both see you and hear you because you're, you're uncloaked. So this is a perfect example of why you want to always be in cloak as much as possible. 
Now this is another problem. You kicked the gen instead of chasing her. She's gone. She left. She sprint bursted away as Megs do. And yeah, there's no way you can hope to catch up with her unless you're in cloak running windstorm. So you, you're trying to catch up as best you can. You see these scratch marks here, you peek out the window and you leave. Now, she definitely went through that window. Like, absolutely 100% went through this window. But the problem is, is you don't see any scratch marks out here because she fell directly below you. What she probably did was fell and then went directly below you. But you decide not to chase, which is acceptable. You, you hear you hear a gen here, but you don't know how to get to it, which, I mean, that's just the result of the, the game design, unfortunately. Pop through the wall, you see a Kate, she starts panicking, and you get a free hit on her, which is great. Always take those. She's very new as well, so she panics, goes down, you, you kick a generator, which is very good. It's totally great to spend your time before you are taking a survivor to a hook by kicking generators, kicking pallets, and all number of uh, trivial things. So, uh, it looks like she's new enough where she doesn't even know how to e even struggle, which is very new. Um, you should be cloaking right now. It's his main power. You get panicked by, by the jump scare. Good tracking here, even though you didn't see any scratch marks. Now here's something I'm going to highlight. You chase him instead of breaking the pallet. This is good. If you see him go through this doorway, you definitely want to just go through the doorway with him. If he plays the pallet, then you want to kick it. So instead of following him, you opt to go check on your hook survivor, which is kind of a deba debatable situation. Um, mainly because you're, you're you know, un you were uncloaked. Uh, but your only option here is to essentially, you know, patrol the hook with Noed. That's that's your option. You'll want to hit this Dwight, but unfortunately you go after the Kate again. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. You don't have any obligation to go for the Dwight. It's just kind of a manners thing. Um, you don't have barbecue and chili either. You got your kill. That's fine. Now you're going to be looking for the exit to see if you can make any other kills. Still not cloaked. You could have taken that uh, stairway. That's all right. You're looking for a drop down until you finally find one. And it's the wrong exit. Unfortunate. This, this is, you know, the obelisk was right there. Uh, this, this is all just a huge, huge misunderstanding. Um, this, this map is one huge maze if you don't know the layout, which takes a long time to learn. It's it, it's just a classic case of just being confused and not knowing your way around this whole map, this whole game. Um, so we'll, we'll see here in a second that it is indeed a rank 20, 19, 18 game. Some people barely have perks. Um, yeah, it, it, it's basically this whole game can be attributed all these three people getting out is to just the map being terrible for you. You don't know it. You don't know how to traverse it, how to get up and get down. You don't have enough experience to know, you know, where the survivors are going to go whenever you see scratch marks. So you have a hard time traversing this extremely complex map. Um, but there are a few other things that I will, I want to go over. So first things first is you tend to peek and kind of walk around very gingerly. Um, like this, you're just kind of like walking and, and looking and, you know, and then, oh, and then you start moving and you look in there and, oh, but you hear, and then, oh, okay. And then it delayed and it, it's all very, very, what looks like methodical, but instead it's just very hesitant. Um... As a killer, you are in a race against the survivor's generator number. So you want to spend as little time 
essentially as little time dawdling as you can. You always want to be moving, you always want to be chasing somebody, kicking generators, kicking pallets, you know, going around checking generators, chasing survivors, all of all the things that you can be doing at all times. That is something that you'll learn to minimize as you climb the ranks. Um, I, I can't expect anybody at the beginning of their killer experience to be good or great at this, but it's definitely something to keep in mind while you're you're roaming the midwitch middle school hallways is is what should i be doing oh i need to be looking for survivors but how do i find them oh i need to be going to generators i need to be going to the next one you see all these generators highlighted you just if there's no survivor here you go to the next one and the next one and the next one the next one is going to be perk improvement uh i don't like whispers one at all it's useless for you you could change that out for something that is also a free uh, general perk called bitter murmur it's similar to uh, sloppy butcher in that it it's for everyone everyone has it unlocked at the beginning um, at least bitter murmur so that whenever somebody finishes a generator in the distance and you're just wandering around aimlessly you don't know where they're going or where they will be Instead of just going to the finished gen, you'll see their aura for a few seconds after it's finished, which will give you a very clear indication as to where they are. Now, consequently, it pairs very well with Noed at the end of the game, since at the end of the game, it shows you all survivors' auras for 10 seconds, regardless of whether or not they're close to a generator. So you can basically spend that 10 seconds going and finding somebody and downing them with Noed giving you that free sweet, sweet kill at the very end. Now, the biggest problem that, like I said, you're going to be wanting to think about is this whole experience from like here, where right after you hook the Dwight to all the way down here, really. Like a full minute and a half before you find this mech where you're just wandering around doing nothing. You you aren't kicking generators, breaking pallets, or anything really. You're just kind of doing nothing. Like I said, you, you need to you need to work on, on using your power, making sure you try to use as much of your power as possible, and to that end you want to be doing something with it. In Wraith's case, you you want to be stealthing around and and covering as much of the map and creating pressure as possible. So yeah, it's a long, pretty pretty great road I would say for killers. And you know, there's no you've got hope. You're not you're not the worst thing in the world. You you'll do just fine. So yeah, and that'll about wrap it up. So if you wanna see yourself in this video like i said send me a dm send me an email and if you like this video and you want to see more i should be uploading these once a week so give it a comment subscribe follow me on twitch on youtube and all my other stuff and i'll see you guys next week have a great one